These three pieces are called uh, reg bale. Uh, so it's reg bales one, one, two, and three. <clears throat> but it made more sense to hang them this way. And this, uh, this was a design that I started working on when I was doing an artist residency in St. Andrews, New Brunswick last year, before, no, the year before last, before the pandemic. Uh, I was an artist in residence at Kingsbury International Residency for the Arts with a group of really lovely and supportive people. And I didn't finish, um, I think I finished maybe one rug during that residency, but I did a lot of sort of research work and conceptual work in preparation for this show. And so most of the pieces that you'll see are inspired by that residency. Uh, and what I was finding was that while I was doing research on what happens to clothes, um, was that uh, there are not a lot of images of places like rag yards, these massive warehouses where clothes end up after the thrift shops. Um, clothes don't always get sold out of thrift shops. Actually, surprisingly little does get sold there. And after just a couple of weeks, clothes get moved on. And a lot of stuff does get recycled, but more and more that material can't be recycled because it has plastics in it. Um, anyway, these images of uh, bales of clothing in rag yards really reminded me quite a bit of the linen foundation cloth and the kind of grid found on the foundation cloth that I use for rug hooking. Uh, and I wanted to kind of expand that. I started to think of my own rugs as a kind of a rag yard, but not just as a place where, you know, clothes go when they become a problem and too burdensome, but also a place of possibility and creative potential. So this rug was the first one that I did, and this one is mostly made out of reused wool. So it has a sort of a more of a glowy and it's a softer texture um, on this rug and it's it's fuzzier. And this one here was the second one that I did. And I wanted to differentiate between the rugs. I didn't want to do this exactly the same thing, like three or four times. So I um, started using quilting cotton uh, for this rug so that you can see that the surface um, does take on a different texture when you get all of those hundreds of different types of materials working together. But predominantly this one is quilting cottons. And I mean, there's a bit of silk and wool and so on still, but, uh, but yeah, it's sort of more freckly, I think. And the third one here uh, is a lot of t-shirt materials, um, some sweaters, and also this was the piece I was working on in March last year when the pandemic hit. So it also contains things like really old washcloths <laughs> that were the right color. And so I started cutting those up. I got a little bit desperate. Uh, baby clothes that I was getting rid of or that were stained and I'm like, okay, what tiny little scraps can I use from this? And I also had a stash of men's silk ties that had belonged to my father uh, and I realized I'm probably not ever going to make that quilt out of silk ties. And it was the pandemic. And then it also has like some, you know, fun, different upholstery trims and things like that. So it's definitely got a, a kind of a mustache over here and over here. One of the things that was really fun about setting up the show was that we realized what great shadows these pieces have. It's not so much that they have five o'clock shadows as that they have like five day stubble. I love that you can sort of see the dimensionality as the, they're actually set off, they're hung off the wall. Um, and that only adds to that effect. So that was sort of really fun to do during the installation and realize that as my six-year-old said when he came in, it's like, oh, they look really good when they're on a blank wall. And I'm like, and not just propped up against the bookcase. And he's like, yeah. <laughs>